All right. Well, Josh, we know you're bullish on alternative assets, especially cryptocurrency. Let's talk to the rest of the investment committee, find out their likes and dislikes right now. Brenda, let's start with you. What are you looking at? We still think there's a lot of opportunity within the retail sector in our consumer sector. I'll say, you know, the, the names that we hold there are Amazon, TJX and Booking Holdings. So all those names have really lagged this year. Um, and we think there's still a lot of opportunity. Obviously, there's still disruption happening from supply chains, disruption from Delta variant. But we think we'll get to the other side and that these will end up being, you know, great names from here. Um, so that's where we really see a lot of the most opportunity uh, within our within our allocation. So, Brenda, really quick, I had to ask you, are you at all concerned about some of the trends in retail? Like the XRT, for example, up today on those better than expected retail numbers. But over the last month or so, down a percent and a half when people are really out there buying. Yeah, well, we really think, you know, we're. we're we pick our spots, and so we don't have a lot of exposure to traditional brick-and-mortar retail. TJX, honestly, is the first name we've owned in a long time with exposure to traditional brick-and-mortar. But we own it because we think there's a great opportunity there, not only with the quality of the retail, uh, but also from a margin perspective. Management should really be able to improve margins over time. Um, and also, given that a lot of uh, department stores have closed doors, so those are direct competitors, even though they're not in exactly the same business. Um, and and then Amazon, of course, where we think there's still going to be continued gains and shift toward uh, online retail. And we saw it in the numbers this morning um, that that is one area of continued strength. And then with booking, uh, you know, that's really a play on, on a return uh, to travel and leisure related activities, which I think we saw some of, definitely saw a pickup um, happen in the second quarter. Um, but likely a pause happening this quarter with Delta variant, but we think things will get back on track, hopefully um, soon, but probably honestly not until next year. But we think there's a good opportunity to add exposure here when you know, the John, stocks haven't performed as well. All right, John, over to you. I, I kind of saw a glean in your eye when we started talking about retail. Not as excited about it as crypto, obviously, but what's your take on retail? Well, um, you know, Jim and you both talked about how many of those ships are stuck uh, outside Long Beach? And I'd heard, Frank, that it was even up to 60 some odd ships. Um, and that's weeks and weeks to unload. But um, a lot of these uh, beneficiaries are gonna continue to be beneficiaries of that tight supply. Uh, even though they'd like more to sell, of course, Frank, um, they're not having to cut price to move inventory like frequently happens with the Labor Day uh, holiday and so forth. Um, instead, they're able to get much closer to a retail. Now, yeah, they have you know, said that it's marked down 20 percent, Frank, or more. <laughs> but uh, a lot of these, like Macy's today, you look at how that one's performing. I own a number of uh, stocks in the retail space, including big box retailers like Walmart and Target. And I think they go well all the way through um, Christmas this year, Frank, because of tight inventories and demand being through the roof. Uh, because of the extra stimulus money, even though that stopped now September 6th and they're talking about trying to restart it. I think that's a no go. Instead, I think a lot more of this money will be spent at Christmas than any time in the past. Yeah, John, I can believe you. Uh, anecdotally, I was in the Nike outlet yesterday looking for some stuff. Nothing on clearance, not even at the mm -hmm. outlet. I went to the counter. I was like, is it no. on sale? They're like, no, it's just <laughs> not. Uh, Farmer Jim, yeah, over to you. I agree. Where are you seeing uh, a chance to make some money in this market? Is it out of retail? Is it crypto? What are you looking at? Well, it's probably no surprise based on my earlier comments and what people know of me that I do find the value and the opportunity over the next six months in the cyclical sector. So, I mean, some of this should make sense to people. I do believe interest rates will slowly rise uh, as, the, as the Fed begins its taper. So financials, money center banks, a good place to be. You can see where crude oil is right now. You can see discipline from OPEC and from the shale patch tells me that crude oil and natural gas prices are going to stay high. So I see opportunities in energy as well. I think the one place I would stay away from is what I call the hyper growth area. Uh, these are the stocks that are measured on price to sales basis that have aspirational earnings in the out out years that will come down as interest rates go up. So I only have about three and a half percent of my portfolio in these. That includes Twilio, Salesforce, although it has earnings. And I would add to those on the dip, but I'm going to be patient there. Hey, Frank, there's one thing I want to point out, because I think uh, Bob Pisani's comment about the Spider-Man comic is illustrative of something. You have to ask yourself, who's buying that mm -hmm. and for what purpose? 
Whoever bought it, I don't know who it is, but I doubt that they're actually going to read it. I think it goes in a <laughs> safe somewhere as a store of value. And why would they do that? I mean, look at the second largest economy in the world, China, and what they're doing to their wealthy uh, citizens. They're confiscating their wealth. So people are looking for places to store wealth that maybe isn't as traceable as stocks, bonds. It might partially, although not completely, include NFTs and crypto. But 3.6 million for a comic book, you have to ask yourself, who's doing that and why? I don't know who it is, but I suspect money is flowing out of China. Uh, you know, that's a fair point. I think a lot of people are buying collectibles and other things really to hold on to them. A lot of times you see those things stay in the box. Josh Brown, I'm going to come back over to you for a second. J.P. Morgan out with a note. I know you said that nobody cares about equities anymore, but J.P. Morgan out with a note today that, that uh, investors are piling into small cap stocks. Um, last week, the, the, the trades of small cap stocks up more than 16 percent. How are you taking that? I, I should clarify, it's not that nobody cares about stocks, it's that the market has really been doing nothing all summer. So what I'm saying is that people's attention is focused on, on where the fireworks are. And for the most part, what they're looking to do is fund private companies. Small caps uh, are not, small caps today are not the same as small caps of the past. They're mostly not growth companies. Small cap value is up 22% this year. Small cap growth is only up 5%. So I do think that that segment of the markets has benefited from a little bit of that rotation into value, into cyclicals. We know that there are a lot of industrials and a lot of financials in the Russell 2000, and most of those would be value stocks. Um, and then there's also some peculiar stuff happening there where like AMC is in the small cap value bucket, believe it or not. Uh, and that stock is up 2,000% year to date. So try not to pay too much attention to the, the uh, performance data of the Russell 2000 and try to extrapolate a bigger story from that. Um, the one thing that people forget, yes, it's an asset class, small cap U.S. stocks. No, it's not a large one. The entire thing is three and a half trillion, which I've pointed out is basically Apple and a quarter of Google. So uh, I guess it's notable that people are making money outside of FANG and large cap growth stocks. That's good. Um, but I, I just don't think it has bigger meaning uh, than, than what I've described so far.